Hello, everyone. How are you all? Today we don't have um, PowerPoint. I didn't do one. And I'm just going to talk to you about the lenders because I know uh, the PVP has to be processed through a lender. So you would have to work with a lender. And uh, most of them are doing them online. I don't think there's any one of them are not doing it online. So let's just kind of uh, break that down and know that even though things are online, that doesn't mean they create anything more for you. They really just go by what, I, uh, what SBA really needed them to do. And so they have a little creativity in the beginning of the online process. Other than that, everything is really standard. So I kind of want you to understand that that will help you a lot. It doesn't matter which online application you are going to use. Know that you are allowed to apply multiple places, okay? Once it goes into SBA, the other, the other lender who submitted late for you, and that would not work. So if you are not comfortable with just waiting on one lender, they just don't get back to you, and you're worried about your application not going to be processed through. And after this webinar, and then you can go ahead to apply other ones. It is not no harm to you. And one of them would make on to SBA. Okay. And let's go into this page I want to go into. This is the second draw for our application. SBA published it. You can tell. And uh, it says expires on 2021. So let's just go through the form because when you go on to when you go online to do your application, it is really the way that lender breaking down this form. Things outside of this form, they don't ask because they want to meet SBA standards, get you approved. That's all. Okay. And before they give you, they ask you these questions, they do make sure that you, you are eligible for getting the PVP second draw. So they ask you questions about what is your monthly sales and um, you know what is in 2020 versus 2019. So those are the questions you, you will go in first to get yourself eligibility-wise um, met the standards. Then they will open up questions related to this form. So I want to go through this form with you because I want to make sure that you are prepared. When you get online, these are the questions. So number one, they want you to identify yourself, whether you are a sole proprietor or partnership or C-Corp, S-Corp or LLC, independent contractor, self-employed individual. Look, 501c3619 and the housing cooperative and the tribal business and others. So most of our small businesses, and you will choose the first, uh, those first few boxes, right? So proprietor. So what is so proprietor? If you file your business in your 1040, inside of that 1040, you have a schedule C, then you're so proprietor, okay? And then partnership, you get K1. And C Corp, you don't get anything. You just have a business that is independent from you. That's C Corp. And S Corp, you got K1. Okay. LLC, that one could be the partnership and also could be so proprietary. Depends on how many people are inside the ownership of LLC. Okay. So, based on your situation, you want to answer that correctly because. Once you answer sole proprietor, they will not asking you for monthly sales anymore. They ask you for annual sales. Annual sales, did you reduce? Because they know that sole proprietor probably don't have a quarterly, they have annual. So based on your question right here, they already, in the program, they already knew how to make you compare your sales to determine you are 25% of less or not, right? And the DBA or trade name, that is very typical when you are sole proprietor and you call yourself 
a cleaning ladies, but you are putting that under your personal tax return that you never registered. It's just how you call your business. That's a DBA name, doing business as name. Or trade name, trade name normally you register, but DBA name, if you didn't register and you just call yourself under um, sole proprietor is so allowed, you can do that. Years of establishment. And you want to put that in because for the second draw, either you are a business from 2019 or you are newly established in 2020 before February the 15th. So maybe here you will say yes, one year. If you say one year, the computer program will actually know that, okay, that means uh, we don't have 2019 data. So the computer will know that to ask you for data in 2020. So this is where the establishment is actually important. I know you are not filling up this form because you are doing it electronically. So those form got breaking, breaking down by the lender. Okay, NAIC code, you should know your NAIC code is on the uh, on your tax return. And the reason NAIC code is important because there are some, some people will get 2.5 times of the monthly payroll, some will be 3.5, so important. And the business team, that's EIN number folks, or it is your social security number if you are a sole proprietor. Business phone number, primary contact, email address, no need to say, you know what that means. And the business address is the same as your home address if you are sole proprietor or if you are independent contractor, if you are just using your home as your business address. Okay, so that is straightforward. Now, average monthly payroll. So purpose of the loan, select these things. So what is your average monthly payroll? Average monthly payroll means that they want to know in average, whether it's the quarter or is the year, what is your what is your monthly total gross pay? Okay. They allow you to add number one, your employer paid health insurance, employer paid 401k, employer paid 401k match. The employer paid cash balance plan amount. They allow you to add the state taxes, workforce charges in there as well. So it is more than gross pay. It is very similar for the first round, how you calculate. But right here, I want you to know that it is more than your gross pay. But what if you say, well, I'm a sole proprietor, I, I made, $24,000 uh, at the end of the year. So each month is about 2000. I don't really have anything uh, to add into my uh, grossly monthly uh, salary payroll because that 2000, I just pay myself. That is considered your payroll, okay? If you also contribute to solo 401k and if you also contributed to your traditional IRA, you are sole proprietor and you can add that in there. So this is where the lender will come out, ask you for backup and you want to supply those backup to them to calculate your average monthly payroll. Once you have that with your NAIC, NAIC code, then you know that if you are a CPA firm, you times 2.5. If you're a restaurant, you do 3.5. If you're a hotel, you do 3.5. If you're Uber driver, you do 2.5, okay? So you got a number here. Number of employees, if you are so proprietor is one. And if you are, if you are a LLC, but you only pay yourself, so you are the owner, so you are one, then you hire the contractor to do work for you. So don't put two, it's one. That contractor you hire, they should do this form themselves. They should do this form checking independent contractor here. So if you have a business that you don't have payroll and you have a bunch of independent contractors, make sure each one of them eligible go for PPP, second draw. 
Okay, so that's what you need to do for your for the people who work for you. And the purpose of the loan, you can check payroll cost and see there's extended things. And you at least need to pay that money you got for 60% into payroll, 40% to other expenses. So it's all listed here. Okay, you can just check one and you can check more covered supplier cost. You can check all of it, but you know, you want to check it and then know how you're going to spend it. This is how you will spend it. It is not how you calculated your payroll. And because you calculate that 100% on payroll, so you don't, you don't need to just check one, you can check more. Okay, you can check more. See, they stay, right? So this is what you're gonna check. Then PVP, first draw SBA loan number. This is so difficult. I know there's a system issue related to that because when we got our first PPP, if you use the lending, uh, you know, the, the company that you did online, they have their own loan number to give you. They didn't really give you the SBA loan number. So you don't have that loan number. And I was told just recently that you can actually don't put in there because you don't know. And you can leave that and then the, the bank will try to find it for you. And they can inquiry SBA to know your loan number from the first one, okay? So now, reduction in gross receipt of at least 25%. See, right now here they are saying that 2020 quarter, so which quarter? For example, second quarter, that's what you're gonna do. You say second quarter, 2021, 2020, then that is, let's say your second quarter 2020 is um, 75,000. So that's your sales, 75,000. Oh, they want you to do second quarter right here. So second quarter, 2020, 2020, and uh, 75, and reference quarter is a second quarter. That's required, folks, 19. You have to do the same reference, okay? See, they give you example. Then here need to be that in order you to qualify for second PPP, okay? So that's a qualification. So this is where that system, the, the computer system will run through. So of course, there is ownership, your name, your title, percentage, your, your SSN number, your address is really standard. And now these questions will show up on the computer as question to you. So you just answer them, right? So you go through these question, is the applicant or any owner of, of the applicant suspended and debarred and um, proposed for department? And those are criminal side of things that you can go through and it's very obvious. If you don't even know those English words, that just means it's not related to you. That is kind of how I took on the medical side. When I go to see doctors, if they give me a word, I haven't even heard of it and I'm not worried. I said, I don't have that problem because I knew if I have that problem, I would know that word really well. So uh, same thing, if those kind of things make you dizzy, that just means that you probably don't, you, you don't have that situation. So here you want to uh, um, initial and then here is the signature. So they don't show up exactly like this form, but they lead you through this form, then you electronically sign, okay? So I want to go through this form quickly so you know what to expect. And now let me go through the lender with you. So the first I have is Wells Fargo. And the Wells Fargo already opened their portal. If you have a Wells Fargo online login account, and when you log in, there will be a button for you, shows you click for PPP. So they only allow their clients who has Wells Fargo's bank account to apply. So random people you cannot do. So you want to make sure that you, you check your username, password, and you sign on. And it, it just, I don't really have a fake one. I don't want to make up a fake one to show you. But Wells Fargo, you go through here, you will get to the PPP, okay? Then the other one I want to go through is US Bank. US Bank is already open. Same thing. You need to log in 
you use regular account login, and then you will have a button for PPP second draw. And even if you didn't have the first draw with US Bank, but you have a US Bank account, you can do that, okay? So that's US Bank. I pull up another bank, Sunrise. They are doing the same. You have to log in. So what if you say that I have the bank account open with US Bank, but I never had online access to it. So what am I going to do? You need to call to get that set up so you can go because this second round is all online. Okay, it is uh, those lenders, they are not going to sit down with you to fill up the form. The only places you might get those VIP treatment, those are very small banks, maybe credit unions. And I actually did not know, and I heard in, um, in Des Moines, the Heritage Bank in, inside of, um, inside of uh, Hy-Vee, and they do that person in person. But I, you know, I don't really know whether they, are doing it for people who don't have account with. So these are the these are the banks that hopefully you have account, you have the login already, then you already can apply. Okay. And then what if you just don't have any of those banks? Then what you can do is to go online, go online people to apply. And they are open too, just like this one I'm pulling up. And this one is AMUR Equipment Finance, but they are a small lender and they allow you to, to, to apply. We actually already had several uh, businesses apply through this. And um, I'm not sure, I don't think they got funded yet, but the application got accepted, so it's done. And in this process is a literally going through that form we were talking about, okay? Then of course, uh, you have, you know, I just went online, look for the PVP second draw application. And then there's so many lender pop up. This is another one I pull out. And they also are, they also are accepting. And then you can also apply with this bank. This bank used to be called Tappage. And I, in the first round, they were really, really doing well. And I think they probably went through transition. They they already sold, so now it's called one play. And here, I, I went in and I did the first step. I, I put in my information, I put in my address, so now I'm, I'm starting to apply for PVP. And I just want to show you the process right here. See how they have a business information? So I need to put in legal name and the DBA if it is applicable. And if your legal name, if you are sole proprietor, your business legal name is your name, okay? So your DBA, you have it, you put it in. If you don't, you don't. So business email, your email. Business phone, your phone. And additional information. Entity type that you can choose, okay? And you can choose the entity type here. So they have all kinds of entity types. So proprietor is right here. So these are all... They're just trying to translate that form into an electronic process. So once I finish the business information, they have owner information, questionnaires, those where you can, you know, where we say yes or no, and all of these questions, that's, that's all in there. Then payroll information. So don't get, don't get worked up with that word of payroll. I know for sole proprietors or subcontractors, as soon as we mentioned payroll, we were like, no, I don't have payroll. No, you do. You have payroll. Because in your Schedule C, where you have the, uh, the, the, you know, the Schedule C on the bottom, that's a line 31. That's where your payroll is. Okay? So you do have payroll. They just sound, they sound really big, but it just means the money you pay to yourself. Okay? And here, your ESAN. See, and then you are done. Upload document. They want you to prove that you are who you are. So IDs and everything get uploaded. Application completed. Okay. So this is really where um, the online process gonna lead you. When you are in the online process, I am not sugarcoat this. And sometimes it's your problem. You did it wrong, and it didn't go through. And uh, equally, the 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 online system issue. For example, 
we experienced the issue with Wells Fargo's U.S. banks and, you know, and this AM, um, you know, they, 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 have, they have glitches. So, but it will work out. So you want to make sure that you get all everything ready. You look at that form I showed you right here. And if you already be able to fill it out with your hand and you pretty much had everything already, then you are ready to, to apply. Just make sure that when they ask you to upload document, they actually want you to prove. How did you calculate your average payroll? Then you need to come up with all these documents to show that you, you did it right. So these are the things I say it is important for you to know this form before you start doing online. And most of the bank is open. And last week when we talk about this PV2, there's still very a few and the banks are not open and the people are concerned right now, it is all open. It is up to you to apply and you really want to make that your priority, okay? And we had experience from before and the PV is not enough. And with the situation the way it is, pandemic is not getting any better and it is absolutely worsened than before, okay? So with that, and if you can apply, you need to apply. And other than PVP folks, and some business don't qualify for PVP, but you can have the, you know, the, e, the, ER, the ERC credit, right? Employee retention credit. And I have under, under, our, uh, under our YouTube, and you have ERC do it yourself, um, only 26 minutes. So you can go take a look at that and then know what they are and then know whether you qualify or not and really apply for that. And other than that, and you have an EIDL loan, no more grants, folks. You can apply for second round of EIDL, EIDL but you're not gonna get the grant. And what they're saying is that for the first round of the grant, that's a $10,000 grant. A lot of people just got a thousand, 2,000, 3,000. SBA is working on to make up the difference, but you don't need to do anything. You just wait until they implement the policy and making sure that you got, um, you got all these federal assist, assistance program utilized. So your EIDL loan, if you have to borrow money, I go for EIDL loan, not banks. And the PVP, I'm looking for forgiveness. That's why I'm looking into P, PVP loan, right? So that should be your second step. Your third one, it should be employee retention credit. That's not a small credit. I'll tell you that it is a 50% of the payroll you paid to your employee. It is a lot of money if you have um, more employees than one, okay? And so the other, the other things that we, you know, not re so related to business, but it's also important, that is, your, um, that is your unemployment benefit. That one is in place. And your stimulus check, you should be getting that $600 already. If not, ask questions and make sure that you, you should be getting it. But wars come to the worst. If you didn't get it, don't worry. Because when you file your 2020 tax return, that credit will show up. It will ask you, did you got the money? You say no, then you can get it at that time. But if you say yes, then that credit is not there. So that's part of the tax return for 2020. And we know that the tax return 2020 got de delayed to February the 12th. And that means that IRS is not ready. They're busy with the stimulus check. And that, that also means when, it, when the gate is open and you really have a shorter time, right? From February 12th to April 15th to finish your tax return if you don't want to file extension. Folks, as much as you want to get your money soon, I do not recommend you to file your 1040 early this year, particularly this year, because Biden has um, some changes to those uh, low income families. The child tax credit increased and earned income tax credit increased and then child care also increased. So there's so many things are increasing. If you file your taxes too early, those are not in place yet. And your software company for taxes, they're not really getting it ready and you already filed your return. Then you think of going back to amend it or do something else or wait until they realize that your tax return was filed too early and they should give you the difference. That's too much hassle. 
you want all of these to settle in before you file taxes. Okay, so this is where um, this is where I want to mention that to you, and you consider. And on Saturday, when I talk about this whole pandemic time, how to deal with your personal finance, your taxes, and your government assistance. And on Saturday, I'll have an hour there to talk to you, and I want you to participate and go there, meet me on Saturday at the three o'clock. But today, I just want you to know all lenders are open. If you just go on website, and if you just type in, you know, let me give you a try. So I'm just gonna type in for SBA PPP uh, second round. Okay, so look at this. All of these ad, they are effective ad. They are ad. They are ad. So they show up on the top because when you click, you will apply. See, this is the one we looked at earlier, right? So this is this one. W O M P L Y. So. You see how they are right on top. And then these are all the tax FYLE also is the one. And the NA Bank Co, they also open. So all of these are helping you to say that you can click us and get PVP second right here. So you can try. And like I said, you don't have to stick with one lender. You can try your luck with other lender. And but of course, you want to make sure the amount is the same, right? You don't want to apply a lower amount in one vendor. Then the next one you go, well, let's just raise that amount. Then what if the lower one got approved? Wouldn't you feel sad? So I want to make sure you calculate it accurately before you go for it. So, and I had a question here. And after finishing this question, we're done for today. Please provide a summary of EIDL and what I can use the money for. All right. So EIDL loan is for working capital. Working capital means it is not to buy a building for your office. It is not to renovate your building to be more pretty. And the EIDL loan for working capital means it is your inventory, it is your expenses, it's your salary, is everything that on the income statement, but not the one with the depreciation. Okay, so make sure that if you applied for EIDL loan, you spent it. You always want to keep the record. It's six years long time to keep it. And the EIDL loan, I, one thing I tell you, I promise you, and you mark my word, and all of the people who applied for PVP and the people who applied for EIDL, majority of the small business will be compliance review. And IRS already made announcement, they're increasing audit on small businesses, okay? And uh, believe it or not, it comes with um, new presidents. Every time a new president comes around, and uh, so IRS beef up and they audit. I think that's a good uh, revenue generator. So um, I hope that answered your question. And a good luck with the EIDL loan. I already know people got their second loan for 150,000, so it's real, okay? Go apply and uh, thank you for being with me today and have a good week. I will see you on Saturday. Bye-bye.